on. Uh, so today we're going to be kind of prototyping some different ideas on how to handle clouds. And I thought it would actually be good to start up today. Let's take a look at what we can find on Shader Toy. See if we can find anything interesting. What are you doing? Go! No, stop that! What the fuck? Alright. Jesus Christ. Shader toy! Go to the website, you son of a bitch! Is this just not gonna what the fuck? All right, I'm over it. fuck is going on? Is the website down? Maybe the website's down. Um, hmm. All right, we'll scratch that. I was trying some remarching solutions here.
thinking. Um, so, well, that was interesting and unexpected. So this is like a ray marching version that we've that I put together. I don't think my remarching function is 100% correct here. And we're back in third quarter planning. Adams is quarterbacking this project and...
in this video tutorial, and I can give it a name if I want, but I'll just leave it as the custom node code. I'm just example, we're going to need our texture object, the information of the actual texture, and then our sampler, so texture object sampler, and you can name these whatever you want. It could be text object, it could be t text or t map or whatever you want to call it, as long as they're both following that name. So if I were to change this to like uh, text, then this would have to be text sampler. Yeah. But in this case, we're just doing plier for the distance in between the slices. So if you want more distance or more bigger gaps in between these 25 slices that we're drawing, you will have to increase this value here. But I think 0 0.15 should give us a good distance for now. But that's how you would be able to adjust the distance in between each slice that it ray marches in depth. And then finally, we'll have to take our texture again. So input text, and we'll make that equal our texture 2D sample. Use our texture object, which will What's up guys, in this video we'll take a look at ray marching in depth shader. What's up guys, in this Makes video sense. we'll take yeah. a look at ray marching. Hey Jinx. I'm frustrated that I can't get into Shader Toy because that would probably simplify this a lot. Um, Jesus Christ. What the fuck is that? Yeesh. Yeesh. Switch to Chrome to protect yourself Let's from malware. Let's this. So you can surf without getting fished. Fast. Safe. Yours. There's no place like Chrome. Get Chrome for Windows. Due to volume raymarcher, volume box intersect. Pseudo volume raymarcher function. Let's take a look at that. Uh, material function. Hmm. Okay. 
Let's take a look at this video. And this is kind of what we want to do. A little bit of an artifact kind of in the direction that the camera is moving. That... Did he put the code Let perhaps? Max steps. And it should be working. Let's apply and save. And you'll see that it really doesn't. So we have this sphere clearly like a the camera and the artifacts will be almost invisible. Now let's go back to Unreal and make this happen. Conveniently, you don't want to enable the Polymetrics plugin, and it's going to find. Where's the for loop? Did you know the same video API that does this can also Ugh. do this? And the YouTube commercials are so bad now. Build powerful Go away! With the Fuck API. you! Let's go back to the material editor and change our code a little bit. What the fuck? <laughs> Did you know the same video what API the fuck, that does man? this can also do this? Unskippable six second ad. Unskippable fifteen second ad. Two seconds of video, unskippable six second ad, unskippable 15 seconds. What the fuck? Well, actually, I at some point at some point I changed the blending mode to additive, so let's change it back to alpha composite. Oh, and now we have this artifact which we can fix probably by just multiplying our color by our opacity mask. And then we connect it here. Perfect. Now, for let me rearrange this a little bit. And now, for our final step in our ray marching algorithm, we already have the integer number of steps here on this floor. And it's already scaled by the number of maximum steps that we want. So, if we instead of taking the floor of the number or the number and we take instead the fractional part. That's going to be our last step. And now when we write our code, we need to take into account that this is a fraction of one step. So anyway, let's add a new input to our function and we can call this one final step size. All right, so you just grab this from that looks like Hmm. Interesting.
God damn it. I really, really want this to drag the side of the screen. Oh, it's good. Okay, I see. There. Yeah, you want in that? You want in with that? Here, come here. Uh, well, let's uh, let's take a look at the other things that I've kind of looked into here. So, um, hey, buddy. Oh God, this is an experimentation. This is going to be a, a lot of experimentation in this one. Please. Hola amigos, welcome to the a little bit better. And you can still see a little bit of the stepping in the direction of the camera, but I think it's a pretty good result. And I don't want to end the video without answering. Hola amigos. You know, right here. If you made it this far, you can probably make a better editor than this. And next, we're going to make some tweaks on our volumetric edit march material, so it also has noise, but more importantly, animation. Let's bring it up. And we'll start by adding a couple of new inputs to our function. So, add two new inputs for a total of 23 fading away and flowing through the map we'll need to do All something right, yeah. very Come similar on. to our volume Minus five. <laughs> so in this material we are taking the render target volume and adding whatever our brush parameters we say that we have to add but we could easily create a function or a material a new material called fade out, for example, that took the Let's try target, decreasing. sampled it, and then multiplied Oops. it by a value Hang on. less than one. Let's try and decreasing that would this. Take this texture out. And if you want to do something more complicated, you could sample the render target volume, do a fluid motion or Brownian motion type of pass, and then output it again. And see you next these are interesting I may come back to them oh god Hang on. Hang on. I might realize what's going on here. Current position is camera position plus ray direction times step size times.
Violet, come on. Come on, you can do it. Come on, girl. I know you can do it. Get a good jump. Come on. That was a good jump. Almost. But I've seen you do this a million times. I'm holding it down. Okay, you did it. You did it. Good girl. <laughs> okay. Solved that emergency. Um... Can I get this fucking shader toy? No. I'm gonna sell planet clouds. Fucking Christ, somebody driving the fartmobile.
to delete this and do it again. Pretty cool. I can't tell the difference. Is this motherfucker just driving in a circle? Ooh, that's nice. Okay, this is a reasonably good article here. The other thing we could do, and this is lower tech, but um, we can basically fake ray marching from, you would need bounds because when you're in the atmosphere it looks bad. You would need to do like some kind of other solution for that, but, uh, excuse me, inside and outside can be made to look fine by doing this
Row position. Let's do divide by a hundred. Sample or noise texture. Place our uh, power. Change our material domain to surface, two sided. Vector perimeter nope. All right, so that's kind of cloud ish, right? Um, but since it's a volume texture save this Put it on this. Let's change this static mesh here to a higher resolution one. Maybe this guy. All right, so, and then finally, we want to increase the frequency by a good amount. All right, so there we go. And we got this guy, which is like really a shitty cloud layer. Like we haven't done any work with like distortion or anything like that, but just to show you kind of what I'm talking about, we can then copy. Paste, 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 paste. Let's do 20, 20, and then we'll do 101. This was three, yeah. Five, six, one point one seven, one point one eight, one point one nine. Let's do one more or an even one point two. And you can see the, the problem when you get close to it, right? But you do get from the ground level, it doesn't look too bad as far as the volumetric effect goes. The problem really arises when you transition through it. So this is my first shot that I took at it. Um, And like this works as long as your viewing angle doesn't change.
So from like ground or space, let's add sphere, set it to here, let's paint it. So we can fix this. Okay, we can't fix this. We have to change the material domain. Um so for example we could just do translucent and then we can do white here and this into the opacity oh i know what it is i'm a dingus Shadow, do not cast shadows, and now you can all be visible again. That's probably what the problem was with the pre-multiplied thing in the material. We could probably go back to that now. All right, and then what we would want to do is like, this is obviously too thick. Um, to oh four, oh six. Oh, six, oh, eight, oh, one, oh, one, two, and four, one, six, one, eight. No two. O two two. O two four. O two six. O two eight. O three. O three two. O three four O three six O three eight 
04. All right, there you go. Now, obviously, you would need shadows and all that kind of kind of good stuff. Um, also, let's take the lux on this down. But you can kind of see how this can get us sort of some volumetric clouds, kind of. Let's also go ahead and scale this. Then what you would want to do is take all these, parent them to this guy, and then we can just scale. I'm going to turn off grid snapping. Nope, wrong. So now, if this was a planet, well, it's too small. For one thing, so let's do a hundred. Let's make you ninety. And then our <laughs> that's kind of cool, actually. But obviously, our sample um, scale for the noise is too big uh, at this resolution. So we're going to go here, divide this by 200, save that shit. Still way too big. About 2,000, save it. The problem arises obviously here, right? Because we're just rendering a bunch of slices of a volume texture, basically. And we can also do this programmatically with HLSL. Um, I'm thinking about how to do that right now. basically iterate um, scaling like our, our world position that we're sampling from down each time. But this gives us like a set cloud layer and is actually like pretty reasonably effective from the outside we could add if we wanted to kind of camouflage this we could maybe do like a fresnel Minus.
Now we could just take this, multiply it by the Fresnel. The idea here being that we hide the edges where it doesn't look good by fresneling it off. So it will fade out at those edges. Jinx. So, buddy. I think it needs to be bigger still. I can't see, buddy. You're in the way. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right, we can give cuddles. Fresnel effect is actually camouflaging the fact that it's shitty in here, but um, the problem is is that we also lose the cloud when we're like if we're looking horizontally we lose it because it's like the Fresnel is changing it based on our view angle. So like if we're looking down through the cloud. We get good movement, good volumetric movement, but if we're looking horizontally at it, it disappears because we're hiding um, the issues with it with the Fresnel. Uh, so that gives me an idea, though. Um, cancel. So let's add... Let's grab this... And this. Move them over here. Oh, that fucked it up, huh? Alright, well, we will just... I had this idea a second ago. There we go. Alright, let's do, how big was this? A hundred. A hundred. Alright, great. You're gonna be at zero, 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 except you're gonna be at like over here. Alright, so let's take that same texture. Put it on here. Now what would happen if I was to say, copy this, so you kind of see what happens to it as we move it, so we just want to make a very simple one right now. So what we're going to do is do 100, sure, copy, 200, copy, it's 10 planes, 200, 100, 200, 600, 700, 800. All right, so we got our nice, I mean, it would be, the, if we were going to use this technique, we would use a tighter bracket, but I intend to test something here. So these are all good, but we should probably go down to like a 10, no, maybe 50. How thick is this? We want to make a cube, basically. All right, so wireframe.
That looks pretty cubic to me. All right, so let's, okay, next we want to take all of these guys, parent them here, take this, copy, paste it, and rotate it. And then we need one more. Rotate it again this way. Move it into alignment with the others. Right, it's pretty close. Close enough to where we, okay, so now we have like this array. Uh, lit. We're trying to, okay, so now we need to turn up our Fresnel effects. It's like Almost something that you could use. Almost. Pages. Ah, oh, getting force cuddled by a cat. Um. Do. Actually, not awful accepted the boundaries here. Let's, now let's try something else. Paste it. Move it about halfway. Okay. Paste it. Move it about halfway. Paste it. Move it about halfway. So what we're basically done is like tri planner ray marching with a. I mean, it, like it's not ray marching because we're. This is how I I test the idea for ray marching before I go write the shader right, but like. We're basically doing triplanar ray marching with a um, Fresnel to hide them when your viewing angle becomes too oblique. That's actually not too bad. If it wasn't for the artifacting here, it wouldn't be a big deal. Um...
shadow. Do not cast shadow. So you could effectively do this if I wrote the ray marching correctly um, with three planes in a crisscross fashion, right? One facing up, or it'd probably be Hey buddy So that's one idea. I would really like to be able to get to Shader Toy. That would, I'm pretty sure. That's what I wanted to do first. Hey, all right. All right, all right, all right. We're back, baby. Um, planet Clouds. You cannot sell this work. You cannot mint this work. Hmm. It does have a tendency to lock up your browser sometimes. <laughs> um... Thinking. Data. Red sparse volume data. Thank you. 
U5 Ray March volume texture go. Hola amigos. Welcome. Just looked at God damn it. I just want a generic implementation. The game I step. Thinking, thinking, thinking. So Uh, well, I'm going to do some more research. Um, I'll probably be back after I come up with a plan. Later.